Hey there guys, it's Rick Utsu here with Airgun Web TV, and today we're gonna to take a look at a couple 10 meter precision guns specifically designed for the youth shooting market. This ought to be pretty cool. So before we get started, I'd like to tell you guys that this video is brought to you by Gamo and Daisy, and for good reason. They are heavily invested into the youth shooting programs across the United States, and they've got a new product that I wanna tell you about, and it's the Daisy 599. Now, if you're shooting in these programs, you already know this gun and you probably know it really well. This is the Crossman Challenger, and it has been one of only a couple guns available to you guys as shooters. So maybe you've had the T200 and the Crossman Challenger, and that's pretty much it. You have to go through some rigorous stuff to get your guns approved for these programs, and Daisy really wanted to bring something to the market more affordable. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a look at both of these guns, we're actually gonna talk about the differences, talk about the similarities, and I am gonna shoot a card, and we're gonna see which gun I shoot better. I'll tell you that with all the practicing I've done, just a spoiler alert, with all the practicing I've done, these guns shoot about identically for me on paper. So one point here, one point there, they're very, very accurate. Nothing against the Crossman Challenger. Obviously, it's a great air gun but so is the Daisy 599. And I think once you guys learn more about this platform, you may be thinking, maybe I wanna give it a look. So before we get started jumping into the details about these products, I wanna say that Daisy was very, very specific to me. They said, Rick, you gotta bring the facts not fluff to this video. It cannot just be some sales pitch. You gotta be super objective. And so just so you guys know, while Daisy is paying for this, I am gonna be super objective with regards to these two rifles. As I said earlier, they shoot on paper pretty much identically. I'm getting some great, amazing results for me who's not a 10 meter shooter, just getting great results out of both guns. It's probably gonna come down to a couple things and let's just jump right into that right now. So I'm gonna start first with the Crossman Challenger uh, and then we're gonna go to the Daisy 599. So we'll just slide this over here. And uh, just so you guys know, we're shooting the H&N Finale match today. Those are the pellets we're using. All right, so the Crossman Challenger. One of the things that you have to hit in order to have your product you know, eligible is a price point. This gun, when you go look it up, it's right at $599, but there's a catch. That's $599 without the site. Now there's a couple different sites you can get. There are these sites, which are about 190 bucks, or you can get sites that are a little bit less expensive, more affordable, they're about 120 bucks. So by the time you're all in, what you're looking at here is about an $800 price point if you go with the higher end sites. If not, you're gonna save uh, 60 bucks or so. But that's kind of a chunk of change. Um, you know, the, the high end price point of the gun to be eligible is $600. And the way they get around that is they don't give you the sites, you gotta buy those separately. On the other side, you do then get to pick what sites you wanna run. So this one, again, these are about $200, about 190 bucks plus shipping or you get the ones that are a little bit more affordable. Now the features of this gun, obviously, it's a highly adjustable stock, um, and it's a 2000 PSI fill, it's got the Marauder trigger. Um, I'll tell you this, when I was looking at price point and never having touched this gun, it came in and I thought what I would be getting is really kind of a Marauder variant. What I wound up seeing is actually this is more of a discovery variant than a Marauder variant. And I kind of put that through my head a little bit because at $600, I would think, you know, you should be giving customers the Marauder variant rather than the discovery variant. And uh, that's really what you got here. This is essentially, I don't know if you guys remember this gun, but Crossman had the Katana way back when, which was a Benjamin Discovery with a Marauder trigger and a pretty cool stock. Well, you know, if I roll back time a bit and I look, if this stock was brown and wasn't fully adjustable, I'm looking at a Benjamin Katana, really. And I find that kind of interesting because it seems like um, it's kind of a higher price point than I would imagine for what you're getting here. Um, build quality on this gun, um, it built like a discovery. Uh, just, just the short answer to it. Uh, it uh, it's got a bit of a rattle to it here. This barrel band actually doesn't support the barrel, so it's supported here, and then it's free floated. Uh, just so you know, it hasn't done anything negative on the accuracy. Accuracy's been great. 
So I'm looking at the thickness of the barrel, the quality of the materials, the feel of the stock, although it looks very, very cool. Um, when you start adjusting it and feeling it, uh, you're going to feel pretty quickly the stock is actually fairly cheaply made. You put all that together and I'm thinking, how did they get to that $600 price point? So that's where we're at on this gun. Um, performance wise, uh, I've actually dialed this in. This is a very cool feature I like about this. It actually has, I'll open this up here, it has an adjustable uh, hammer spring right here. So you can actually adjust. Okay, you can put safety on. You can adjust the power by about 100 feet per second. So that is pretty slick. So this gun, you can dial it back for pure 10 meter or you can turn it up a little bit and maybe do some silhouette shooting. So functionally, this may have a little more capabilities because you can actually get some more power out of it. So that's pretty cool. I've got this dialed all the way, nearly all the way back. All the way back is under 500 feet per second. I've got this set to right at 520 feet per second. And the reason is that's exactly what the Daisy 599 is shooting. And I want to make sure we were, you know, talking apples and apples here. So that's what we got going on here. Price point of just the gun is $600. You have to add your sights to it. Build quality is, I was expecting more personally. Uh, I was expecting it to be more like a Marauder and less like a Discovery. It's more like a Discovery and less like a Marauder. So we'll go ahead and slide this over here. And now we're gonna jump over to the 599. Okay, so immediately what you're gonna see is a completely different stock. This is a beautiful hardwood stock. The adjustments are far more robust than this. It's actually just as a, like a plastic tube almost. No, it might be metal, I feel it. It's cold, it's metal. So you got a metal tube here and it sort of wiggles and slides around. Uh, this is far more robust in my opinion. The weight of the gun, um, it's got a good weight to it. It's far more solid feeling to me. Um, and if you look at the barrel, this is a Hammer Forge Precision Match Barrel and it's much, it's much thicker and it doesn't have any flex to it. There's no vibration, there's very little movement. So this thing is very, very nice. It, it is a bit shorter and we can maybe look at that here. Okay, so you can see you're getting a few more inches of barrel on the Challenger there than you are the Daisy, which may lend it to something that you prefer. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. This price point with sights included is sitting at 595. So now we get to really one of the major, major differences between the two guns. This is way more affordable. So at 599, you're getting the gun with the sights. Where the Crossman Challenger fills to 2000 PSI, this actually fills to about 3400 PSI. And therefore the shot count on this uh, is really off the chart, way over hundred shots per fill here. And that one, not so much. I haven't really reached the end of my usable shooting curve here, but it's nowhere near what this will get you. Now, this is great if you have a hand pump and that's what you have it to fill with, then all of a sudden that Challenger starts looking pretty, uh, pretty cool because you don't need a compressor, tank, all that other stuff to go shoot that. This is based off a of BSA air gun, which is that high-end, you know, UK built air gun. And this is not, this is based again, from what I can see really based off the Benjamin Discovery which is a very low end PCP. And you feel the difference when you pull the cocking handle on this, it's very different than you pulling the cocking handle on this. The trigger on this is great. It is the Marauder trigger, so that's awesome. The trigger on this is also very awesome. So you've got very good triggers. I like the build quality here, but now we've sort of talked about them. We know the price point, we know performance is, this is 520 feet per second. This is variable, very cool. But now let's actually go put it on paper at 10 meters and see if I can shoot straight.
Let's see how we did. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're looking at these two guns. We've just shot them. Let's go over the targets. Let's see what they did on paper. Now, as I've said earlier, these things, they're like this, neck and neck, and it probably is gonna come down to the guy behind the trigger as to which one's gonna do better at any given moment. I'll tell you that they're basically equal in all of my tests I've done. But today, one did come on top by one point. Let's go ahead and count the numbers here. We'll start with a Crossman. We had, and I'm gonna go this way with the target. So we had 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 10, 10, 10, 9, 9. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, minus 100, that's 94. For the Crossman, that's pretty good. I am not a 10 meter shooter. And as you saw me probably rubbing my eyes at some point, uh, it gets a little wearisome after uh, at some point shooting these things. All right, so we'll go over to the Daisy now. Same exercise, we're just gonna count the circle. Uh, let's see, scooch this over just a bit. So we've got 10, 9, 9, 10, 9, 10, 10, 9, 10, 9. So we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. So we've got 5 off of 195. So the Daisy today shot 95. The Crossman today shot 94. Realistically, guys, these guns both shoot great. The advantage here, in my opinion, I like the build quality better. I like that it's a lower price point. Those two things alone make me want to give this the nod. I like this platform. I like the feel of it. I like the wood stock. I like the robustness of the whole system. It's just, to me, I think it's better built, um, and I prefer that. But on paper, both of them shot really, really well today. Guys, that's going to be it. My name is Rick Utzer here with Ergon Webb, Ergon Web TV. Thanks for watching.